Hello, I'm Patrick Jenkins, the FT's financial editor. I'm here with Owen Murphy, who is the Minister in Ireland's government responsible for international finance. And we're here to talk about the upcoming event at Dublin Castle on January the 24th, looking at European finance. Uh, Mr. Murphy, welcome. Thank you. Uh, it's very interesting times to be holding this conference. We had one last year uh, around about the same time. Uh, that was before Brexit. Uh, we talked a lot about the prospect of it, and there was a lot of expectation and hope that it wouldn't happen. Obviously, the vote has happened uh, for Brexit. Uh, how damaging is that for British-Irish relations, particularly in the financial services industry? Well, a lot's changed since the inaugural European Financial Forum earlier this year. But there's still a great deal of uncertainty now that we've had the Brexit decision uh, by the people of the UK. And we're looking ahead um, to next year to when Article 50 will be invoked and what that might mean and how the negotiations might unfold. So the European Financial Forum that we're hosting in, in Dublin Castle on the 24th of January is an opportunity for us to bring together key stakeholders to talk about the future of financial services in Europe as we look ahead to the Brexit negotiations and past that as well. You know, financial services in Ireland is um, a really important part of our strategic industry and what we're looking to do to grow the economy uh, as we look to the future. We've got a dedicated financial services strategy and plan up to 2020 to increase that sector. And we complement London and the UK in many ways and we compete in other areas as well. So we want to make sure that as the Brexit negotiations begin and evolve that you know, our interest in financial services and people's ability to contract financial services into the European Union, that those interests are protected. And we'll have an opportunity to discuss that as well at the European Financial Forum. Because on, on, on paper, at least, it would look like it's a potential benefit for Ireland because you are a competitor, as you say, to the City of London. Uh, there is talk that many firms operating in the City of London might have to relocate their pan-European operations to one of the other financial centres in Europe, whether that be Frankfurt or Paris or Dublin. Uh, presumably it's too early to say that any such thing is happening, but isn't that a potential opportunity for you? Well, we didn't want the UK to leave the European Union. And now that they've decided to, to do that, as the negotiations begin, we want to make sure that at the outcome of those negotiations, the UK has a very strong relationship with the European Union, because we think that's in their interests, but also in our own interests as well. But you're right in saying that there are some opportunities for us when we look at international financial services. Because you know, if, if companies that are currently operating in the UK have needs in terms of accessing the European market, and if they're not able to do that once Brexit finally happens, then we'll look to see how we can meet those needs in Ireland. And we think that we're an obvious location of choice in that regard because we have the same English language, the same common law jurisdiction. Connectivity between the two islands is better than between any two other locations in Europe. We have a young, the youngest uh, workforce in Europe and a high educated workforce as well. So a lot of these factors, we think it's a natural choice for businesses that are currently doing contingency planning to see what they might need to move. We think that will be an obvious location of choice for them. But I think it's in all of Europe's interests that London and the UK continues to be uh, a strong global financial services hub because we all benefit from that and we certainly want to continue to, to complement London and the UK in that way in the future. Now the Irish Taoiseach um, recently made comments uh, about that whole idea of you know being too tough in negotiations, urging European leaders in particular not to be too tough in, a, in negotiations with the UK. That's really what you're talking about, isn't it, in terms of not being too competitive, being yeah. more collaborative? Well, I, 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 and I think Auntie Jacinda Kenny is absolutely right in that regard. The UK is a friend. Um, there are, you know, it plays an important role in the region, obviously. And from a geographic point of view, it's not going anywhere. So we need to make sure that the outcome of those negotiations is a positive one for all involved. And, and to achieve that, we need to make sure that as we go into those negotiations, we're going in to the right mood music. Uh, since the Brexit decision uh, you know, was known, what we've heard is a lot of, I think, high rhetoric from kind of extreme sides on either side in terms of people who have interests in what may be coming down the line. And what we need to see happen once we actually get into the room is people taking a pragmatic approach and a responsible approach to conduct the negotiations in a rational way and in an efficient way as well so that we can get certainty as soon as possible. And that's the big difficulty that we have when we look at it from the Irish perspective as a government. We have a very strong relationship with the UK across a, a number of areas. And we want to get certainty as early as we can um, from the Irish perspective in terms of how things might develop over the course of the Brexit negotiations and what they might finally look like. But if you're a business at the moment operating in either jurisdiction, that uncertainty is, is very damaging at the moment in terms of trying to plan ahead to make investments. So the sooner we can get into those negotiations and have them conducted in an orderly manner, I think the better for everyone. Now, one final thing uh, which plays into this whole role of Dublin uh, and its, its role in the, the future of European finance, really. Uh, 
there's been some talk about a potential development of a, a kind of version of uh, London's Canary Wharf in Dublin, a kind of construction of a financial centre or another financial centre. Um, is that likely to happen? Is it necessary in order to attract the business that you might be able to win? Well, so traditionally we've talked about the Irish Financial Services Centre, which was a very specific geographical location in Dublin, north of the Liffey, and that's where we started our financial services offering back in the 80s. But we've now grown to about 38,000 people working in international financial services, and they're not just working in Dublin. About a third of them are working outside of Dublin, uh, throughout Ireland. So we talk about a, an all-Ireland offering when it comes to financial services. And when we look to potential opportunities that might be coming, we're looking to host them you know, throughout the country. But in terms of office space and, and new construction, if you were to fly into Dublin today, you'd see a number of cranes throughout the city. We've got about 3.5 million square feet under development at the moment, another 1 million square feet of office space under refurbishment, and another 5 million square feet uh, in the, with planning approval. So that's, that's in the pipeline. So, you know, a lot more build is going to happen to facilitate any new interests that might be coming and existing interests that's already there as well. And that'll happen in Dublin. Uh, it'll happen around where we have, you know, our kind of silicon docks, the big technology companies, where we have a, a big, you know, financial services offering at the moment. But we'll also be looking outside of Dublin as well, because we think that from a cost competitive point of view and other factors, uh, you know, locations outside Dublin will be very attractive to certain companies in terms of what they're looking to move from the UK to another jurisdiction. Okay. Well, Murphy, thank you very much for that outlook. We'll discuss those topics and a lot more when we gather uh, on January 24th at Dublin Castle to uh, hear what people have to say in our second European Financial Forum, staged jointly by IFS Ireland and the FT. Music